Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I'm excited to share with you a first look at the 27th Guards Motor Rifle Division. This is the second of two new divisions that were revealed recently and will be available to everyone who has purchased Warno during early access. So let's jump on in. Uh, before we start I do need to say that everything you're about to see is work in progress and therefore subject to change. We're going to go through all of the tabs and every unit available and then we'll put together a quick deck. So starting in the logistics tab we have the MTLB, um, a pretty good supply truck in a pinch because it can like come right up to the front line and it does have armor. Only going to provide you with 500 supply per piece though uh, but you do get 10 on a card at 20 points, cheap option. Then we have the Ural, which is always my preferred option with the Soviet supply because whilst it does cost more and you get less availability, it does have better road speed, which is great if you're going to be transporting supply backwards and forwards from a field supply point. Uh, but in this case, 1,000 supply on their own as well uh, does justify the extra cost. Then we have the RKHM, which is just a... MTLB command uh, not too quick but does have amphibious straight which I guess could be useful and then we have the BMP2K which is just your standard BMP2 with command and it has that 30 mil cannon with the conquest so able to defend itself quite well Four front armor actually makes quite a big difference against heavier tanks at, at a distance uh, so quite a good survivability as well uh, but then there is also the other option of the BTR ADK, which relies more on mobility uh, than uh, sort of tankiness. Has less armor, less sort of armament, but is faster, which is useful for like dodging artillery in those cases where you're kind of contesting a sector that you don't really have control of. Then we have the FSP, which gives you that big chunk of supply for 235 points. Moving on to the infantry tab. First of all, We've got some military police. Uh, four AK-74s with the military police trait. Good for providing that uh, suppression regeneration. Definitely don't overlook that, especially near tanks. I would say that because with AT weapons on infantry having increased suppression against tanks, tanks often get left on low cohesion for a very long time. And so mili having military police nearby is a really good way of kind of getting those tanks back up and running again at full effectiveness. So do bear that in mind. And they also come in with a really cool Jeep. Then we have the PKM squad. You get eight of these on a card for 20 points. PKM on its own though, not so great. Uh, the NSV though, pretty good. 1,400 meter range is very, very handy and it does a decent amount of damage. Then we have the AGS 30mm grenade launcher with 50% accuracy. Uh, grenade launchers are decent for applying damage over time uh, but they are relatively vulnerable with only 3 strength. Then we have the OP 4 AK-74s and the RPG-29 21 penetration on this bad boy with 750 meter range and 55% accuracy. Really solid anti-tank infantry squad. You're just going to have to make sure that they are supported by other infantry. And we have Modestrauki. This is the Modestrauki leader. You get four men. They have an RPG-22 as their AT weapon, which has actually pretty decent accuracy stat and really good rate of fire. So it can catch out vehicles in the side armor really, really well. Because you can usually get two shots off into the side of a tank before it even turns. Uh, then we've got the BTR-80, BMP-1P and BMP-2 as transport options. Uh, the BTR-80 going to be your fast, nimble option. The BMP-1P kind of like middle of the road um, sort of armored option with a reasonable ATGM and... It's main gun, which is generally trash. <laughs> and then you've got the BMP2, which is the 30 mil option with the Conkers. Um, some of you guys might have played uh, during a patch where auto cannons were really bad, but they have been fixed again, so do bear that in mind. 
Uh, moving on, we have the Modestrauki RPG 27. Now this is pretty nasty. Uh, it's a 45 point squad, 9 on a card. They get 6 AK-74s, so they get the RPK-74, but this AT weapon, 21 penetration, 65% accuracy with 20 round per minute rate of fire. You do not want to get a tank close to these. It is very, very nasty indeed. Their transport options include the BMP-1P, the BMP-2, the BMP-2D, uh, which comes with extra side armor, basically, uh, but is not amphibious. And then you have the BMP-2AG, which is a BMP-2 with a grenade launcher instead of the machine gun, which is actually a pretty nice upgrade, especially when it comes to providing suppression onto enemy infantry. So a very, very nice APC to bring along. And it's only an extra five points over the normal BMP-2. Then there's the RPG-26 variant of the Modestrauki. These can be brought in with the Gaz-66 or the BTR-80, uh, but they are a slightly bigger squad. You can see they have eight strength compared to the seven strength. Uh, so yeah, a decent Modestrauki squad. Uh, RPG-26 is gonna be their weapon. Still decent accuracy. Uh, penetration obviously a lot worse uh, than the RPG-27. So I think overall this Modestrauki squad is still going to be ideal. Uh, then you have the Metis, which is a bit of a shorter range HGM option. Uh, 1,750 meter range on those HGMs. Actually a pretty solid squad though for kind of being on the edge of towns or in buildings where you're going to be like harassing enemy vehicles quite a lot. Uh, so yeah. Uh, actually kind of a big fan of the, the Metis infantry squads uh, under the Soviets. Uh, but BTR-80, BMP-1P, BMP-2, BMP-2D and the BMP-2AG are all options for transport. Then we have the Sapelli Gomrotti. These are your sort of engineer units, like close range boys. They come with the shock trait. We've got pretty lackluster transports for these though, with just the UAZ and the MTLB. Uh, this is the standard Sapoli squad, again shock trait, 8 man squad comes with the satchel charges and then you have the Sapoli RPO that come with the RPO launchers which are napalm. Um, again, you need to make sure that you bring in a supply vehicle behind these in order to make sure they continue their effectiveness. Without that RPO launcher ammo, you might as well not be using them. So just make sure you have them loaded up before you go into battle. Then we have the Pula Machiki. These are sort of a machine gun squad, basically, uh, with four AK-74s and three PKMs. They do get an RPG-22, which has that decent rate of fire accuracy. Uh, penetration, a little bit lacking. But again, transport options, really, really nice. And these are going to provide more cohesion loss uh, to enemy troops at range. Then we have the Conkers systems. So first of all, the Conkers that we've seen before. Uh, UAZ, BTR-80 are transport options for these. 20 penetration at 2,625 meter range, 50% accuracy, pretty standard. But now there is also the option to bring in the Conkers M. And this kind of is a nice upgrade for Soviet age gems because you get the extra 5% accuracy and you also get that extra three penetration which is going to make a really big difference when it comes to side shotting some of the bigger tanks. You're going to deal a lot more damage. So yeah, a definitely a nice option and not too expensive. Availability maybe a little bit lackluster though. Let's move on to the artillery tab. First of all, infantry based 120mm mortars available to come in with the UAZ and the MTLB. These MTLBs, by the way, don't come with supply like they do in the logistics tab. I think that'd be a really cool uh, addition, potentially, uh, to have a sort of supply MTLBs for infantry mortars, but currently not a thing. Uh, then we have the Nona. Uh, this is a mortar carrier, basically, but it's armored. It's like a BTR um, with a mortar on it. Uh, it's a 120 mil mortar. So same caliber, uh, but incredibly mobile. It also does have a 120 millimeter heat round with 20 penetration, which is nothing to scoff at at 1,925 meters range, but the accuracy is, is trash. So if you get them close enough to, to throw that 120 mil at something, it can do a decent amount of damage to armor, but 
generally going to be using these as long range mortars. And we have the 122mm artillery gun. Generally these sorts of artillery guns aren't all that useful because they're not very mobile and it's not very easy to mass tow at the moment. Um, it'd be nice in the future if Fusion adds like a sort of a system where you can shoot and scoot with towed artillery a bit better uh, in order to make them more effective. But uh, at the moment, uh, kind of easy to counter battery uh, unless you are extremely on point with your micro. And then there is the big 152mm artillery piece. This thing comes with the Kraz truck, um, which is awesome. And yeah, pretty substantial artillery weapon. Same sort of caliber as the Ekatsaya, but actually even more damage here and more range. So there may be instances where on certain maps this could be really strong just due to its range. Uh, if you sit this right at the back of the map, maybe enemy counter battery won't even be able to hit you, uh, depending on obviously the state of your front line. <laughs> but otherwise, provides a decent amount of damage. Then we have the Gvozdiga. Three of these on a card, 150 points piece. Not too bad. 14 kilometers range isn't the best. Their damage can be a bit lackluster, but on mass, actually can do a decent job. Then we have the Ekatsaya, which is more of the standard option. Um, the Ekatsaya, much more reliable in its damage, and that extra little bit of range can definitely help quite substantially uh, for 210 points. But there is now the two s3 m1 ekatsaya uh, which comes with guided rounds so this normal ekatsaya it has indirect fire 700 uh, 17 uh, th thousand meter range uh, with the m1 variant it, it lacks range but it gets guided indirect fire which means that corrected shots are extremely accurate and this is fantastic for sort of pinpoint arting enemy heavy tanks uh, which are left idle um, or just like picking off the like a enemy AA unit really efficiently so definitely a unit to try out then there's the BM21 grad unfortunately these sorts of rocket artillery aren't too effective at the moment just because they lack damage they don't really do too much to cohesion either unless they get direct hits, so I've, I've yet to see these be extremely effective in games. I think if they were maybe a lot cheaper, people would use them more. Anyway, moving on to the uh, tank tab, we've got a really interesting AT gun here. This is the 2A45M Sprut B. It doesn't have a very good range or accuracy, 1925 meter range and 45% accuracy. But it does have some serious damage at 23 penetration, making this an incredibly good ambushing anti-tank weapon. Uh, so something that I think is definitely worth trying out. We brought in with the Gaz or the MTLB. And we have the Conker's M on the BDRM2. This sort of suffers the same fate as the US uh, tank tab launches for HGMs in that it only has mediocre stealth and so it gets spotted way too easily and ends up dying to like one shot from an enemy tank um, before its HGM even hits the mark. Um, 2625 meter range is like enough to outrange an enemy tank and particularly since you're playing as the Soviets the NATO side's not going to have as many HGMs but it's still sometimes going to cause them to just get popped. Um, it's very rare, unless you're like in an open field, that you're going to be at max range all the time. So do bear that in mind. Otherwise, we do get plenty of T80 uh, BVs. We've got the T80 BVKs, uh, which are the leaders. These don't have the H gem, uh, but they are really, really chunky boys. They get normal optics instead of mediocre optics. Uh, so a little bit better at like defending themselves because they can sort of kill enemy infantry uh, much quicker with the extra machine gun. And they uh, can spot the enemy infantry coming. Uh, I think also the T-80BV might still have the PKT, but I'm not sure. 
Regardless, T-80BV is still a good tank. These have the explosive reactive armor, which gives them extra health. That's basically how explosive reactive armor works in this game. You just get extra HP. Um, but yeah, the Cobra, really solid, long range ace gem. 40%, 45% accuracy, sometimes unreliable. But the thing is about this HGM, it allows you to chip the armor of enemy tanks before you engage them in direct combat. Uh, but yeah, 19 penetration is still a really solid gun with 17 front armor. Let's move on to the recon tab. First of all, we have the BRDM2, which is like your standard recon BRDM. I mean, there's not really much else to say here. It's got a KBVT, which can help with infantry fire support, but otherwise just provides very good optics with good stealth. And then we have the Resvetica squads, which have exceptional stealth with very good optics. Uh, nice for dotting around, can be brought in with a recon jeep that has a KPVT. Now the KPVT is actually a pretty solid machine gun to have supporting you. So I do like to bring in these uh, jeeps and they also still have good stealth. Then there's the Radved Kasapari. Uh, these can be useful since they have sort of shock trait and therefore can get their satchel on target. Decent close range infantry with exceptional stealth, very good optics. Uh, certainly something to consider if you're lacking close range infantry in the infantry tab. Uh, BTR 80s, MTRBs are your transport options there as well as the Gaz 66. Then we have the Motor Redvidka. Uh, these can be brought in with BMP2 uh, recon. And this is a BMP2 with good optics. Still mediocre stealth though. Um, there's also the MI8T. This doesn't have any rockets on the side or anything. And then you have the one that does have the rockets on the side. So this is actually a quite decent option uh, for transport just because you do get like that rocket helicopter for support as well. Uh, it just depends like if you want to pay the cost. Uh, it doesn't have any ACM, this helicopter, so it will get hit pretty hard. And uh, they now only have like eight health. So it's only going to take a couple of man pads to shoot those down. Uh, but yeah, BMP2 actually pretty solid option there. Then we have the Spetsradvedka. These are very, very good. Uh, they get the seven AKS 74s, they get the Dragunov, they get an RPG 26 for their AT weapon. Exceptional stealth, very good optics, eight man squad with the GSR trait, uh, which is really important because when they're stationary, they get the extra optics, uh, which basically pushes them to exceptional optics. And an exceptional optics infantry squad that with exceptional stealth is a really really nice combination and if they end up in combat against enemy infantry then they're going to do okay if they get drove past by an enemy vehicle they're going to ambush it with an rpg 26 so decent squad for sure quite expensive though and then we have the brm1 an exceptional optics ground vehicle um yeah that's pretty much all i have to say about that 73 mil gun isn't very reliable so don't rely on it just Put it on return fire and keep it hidden and then we have the mi24k really solid recon helicopter very good optics and also plenty of armament to kill enemy infantry and enemy light armor um, it's basically got these two pods of 23 mil cannons under the wings alongside the rockets so can dish out a decent amount of damage very quickly plus it's obviously got the yakby on the front moving on we have the aa tab Starting off with the Igla. Igla, standard man pad, 55% accuracy. You get 9 on a, on a card, 35 uh, points. Then there's the ZU-23-2. Now these might not look like much, but I wouldn't underrate these at all because they are extremely good for dealing with enemy helicopters. More stopping enemy helicopters rushing you. So where you might get pushed on by a lot of like Cobras and Apaches and stuff, these are really good for sort of stunning those helicopters, allowing you to then move up things like Estrella 10M to take them out. So ZU-23, don't sleep on it. Estrella 10M3 though, really, really, really good. This is, I think, an upgraded Strella uh, with the 60% accuracy. So 60% accuracy on the move, that is, as well. Uh, which means you have no reason to stop when you're chasing down helicopters. Uh, you just keep firing and yeah, you just make good use of that 3,000 meters. Really, really solid infrared anti-air uh, that cannot be targeted by a seed. Really, really nice. 
And then we have the Tor. This is a new anti-air weapon system. Finally made its way into Warno. Has 65% accuracy, which is very significant, with a 7 HE missile. It is radar, however, so you will have to turn it off uh, if you don't want it to be killed by seed missiles. But otherwise, very effective. 3,000 meter range versus helicopters, 3,525 meter range against aircraft. Yeah, this accuracy stat, very, very nice. Similar to something, uh, similar to something like a Roland. Uh, so yeah, definitely don't uh, sleep on this either. Finally, the Tunguska, an anti-air unit that I still feel is a bit overpriced potentially. In the right situation, it can just rip helicopters out of the sky with its 30 mils, plus the uh, Saklos uh, air-to-air missiles. Well, anti-air missiles, sorry, not air-to-air. -air. The Tunguska doesn't fly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, its missiles plus its 30 mils when on target are extremely strong at ripping through helicopters. But it has to get within 2,650 meters of a helicopter to use those 30 mils. And often it will like, if you, especially if you're like attack moving, will just fire its, its uh, uh, missiles. And its missiles don't have accuracy on the move. So that makes it kind of difficult to rate highly. Like if it had like a sort of similar sort of stat in motion for its like anti-air, like these would be way better. But honestly, not a massive fan. And if you have the 30 mil turned on, it does class as a radar guided munition and therefore can be hit by seed. So quite often these will just get popped by seed because you forgot to turn off the 30 mil. And then you're just left with a Saklos missile that's worse than a Strelitanam. Uh, you can see where I'm going with this. 100 points versus 175 points. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, move on to the helicopter tab. Helicopter tab in uh, this division is actually quite anemic, which is something I kind of like uh, for a Soviet division because uh, we have too many strong helicopters in the game right now on the Soviet side. Uh, or too many divisions that can use a lot of helicopters. And it can become quite oppressive. So this division isn't going to be one of those. Um, you have access to the Mi-24V with the Kokon missiles and the 20-122mm rockets. You have the Mi-24V with the Iglas, which are really good for taking on enemy um, helicopters. Uh, particularly like the OH-58, which only has four health. You're only going to have to hit one of those Iglas in order to shoot it down. Uh, whereas they're going to have to hit three missiles in order to shoot you down. Um, really, really nice. And then we have the Mi-24VAT with eight Kokons and the 40 80mm rockets. So this one with the extra HGMs. And generally, I would say that this is a better option than the Mi-24V rocket, even though this gets like... Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it depends. Like, this is a really cheap one. But this one's like got the extra cocons, which can really make a big difference since they do have 2,800 meter range and you got the decent accuracy on them. So this is a reasonably good HGM that can be very threatening to a lot of armor. Moving on to the air tab. Starting off with the SU-17s. SU-17M4 here with the uh, two 30 mils and then it has the 20 122 millimeter rockets and two infrared missiles 30 percent ecm is really good actually for a plane that only costs 155 points but this thing will be nose diving into enemy aa <laughs> when you use it there's also the su-17 m4 with the kh 29t electro optical missile uh, this thing has semi-active uh, radar which means that you generally want to be facing the direction you're firing it, otherwise it's going to be very inaccurate. So again, you're going to be diving into enemy uh, AA. However, because he's only cost 20, 220 points, it could be worth it, uh, because a lot of the targets you'll go for with an aircraft like this will likely cost more than 220 points. Uh, then we have the MiG-23 MLD, which is the air-to-air -air MiG. It comes with uh, two long-range missiles with the 7,775 meters range. 6 HE on those is actually quite nice. 
uh, means that you're pretty much always going to two shot stuff, reasonable accuracy as well. And then you get two infrared missiles and you get the 23mm. Uh, against helicopters, these are going to be kind of trash. Against enemy aircraft, they might just get outclassed. Uh, but they do have 20% ECM, uh, which is decent enough. For 20, oh, for 185 points, not too bad. The issue with these is availability. You only get two on a card. Then we have the MiG-27M. It gets the 30mm uh, in the nose, which is actually pretty effective. But it's going to be bombing up in the sky. So uh, four 500 kilogram bombs, 20% ECM, not too bad. Uh, then there's the MiG-27M with the napalm, four 500 kilogram bomb napalm. Uh, actually a pretty nice payload for napalm, 20% uh, ECM again on these. Uh, so yeah, I would probably pick the napalm variant over the HE variant in this case. We do see the MiG-29AA2. You gotta love, you gotta love a fulcrum. I mean, come on, beautiful. Uh, but this comes with some pretty nasty long-range missiles. Uh, the R-27R, which has 8,775 meters, uh, with 62% accuracy. So very, very nice. Uh, actually, outranges I think the Eagles. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. And then the R-60M, uh, which has. Uh, Quite a short range. It is an infrared missile uh, with 52% accuracy. 20% uh, ECM again on this. Um, and pretty fast. I really like these aircraft. Um, they do have a decent amount of infrared missiles for killing helicopters. But they're still not going to be like terribly effective at doing so. Because they only have one cannon. And then we have the T-8M. Uh, this is a beast because it has Vikir missiles. Now if you guys are familiar with the Akula uh, that the, I think the 39th Guards Air Assault Brigade gets, I think it's 39th or 35th, um, regardless the Akula gets access to the Vikir and so does this plane. And these are very very nice. Uh, 26 penetration at 2800 meter range um, with 52% uh, accuracy. Uh, also has two cannons, so decent at strafing enemy aircraft and, uh, well, enemy helicopters more specifically, and gets the infrared to help with that as well, the infrared missile with 62% accuracy and 5 HE. So yeah, going to be good for taking down enemy helicopters, good for sniping enemy tanks with the Vikia HGM. 10% ECM and that's your lot. So let's just quickly go through and make a quick deck. Uh, in the supply, I'm probably going to go two cards of Euros, one card of the MTLB. The tank tab isn't too bad. Artillery-wise, we probably do want some supply. I don't know if I want to rely on the mob in this, though. I think I'm going to bring it for now, just so that I can potentially test out the Ekatsayas to the extreme. And we'll come back and check if we need to add any of these command vehicles. It's very tempting to add the military police just because that suppression regeneration bonus is very, very useful. But we'll definitely want to try out the Conquer Zem, so we'll throw them in there. I'm definitely going to be using mostly Modestralki with the RPG-27 and probably the Sapari RPO. And then I'm going to bring probably the Sapali Razvedka in the recon tab for my close range infantry. Oh, we also do want to bring these. These are really, really strong. You don't want to miss out on those. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to bring in Modestralki in the BMP2 AG. I think I'm going to upvert them. Make sure they're both in the BMP2 AG there. We'll bring in the Metis squad. And bringing them all in the two AGs is kind of risky. I think at the start, you probably want some of these in the BTR ATAs. These ones can't come in BTR ATAs, which is kind of sad. But maybe that's a reason to bring these in as well, because they'd be useful at the start. Whereas these two AGs, maybe something that you bring in later on. I might bring in one slightly more availability. Otherwise, we definitely need the Sapati RPOs, and we'll come back to leaders in a moment. For the artillery tab, we're definitely going to be trying out the new Akatsayas. Uh, I think you can up those for free, so we might as well. 
they'll probably change that later on. Otherwise, we'll do some nonas and potentially even more Akatsais, or maybe we can just like spam some rockets with the grad. I also kind of want to try this bad boy. Let's throw them in there. Then we have the Spruts, we're going to throw them in, so I get to try them out, or we'll throw in the uh, T-80BVs. Conkers are kind of tempting to put in, but the activation points in this tab are terrible. So we're probably going to be going for standard BV tanks, not the BV leader. So we'll throw in a few cards of those. I'm going to be bringing in the Rajvat Kesapare. I think these are useful to bring. And we're definitely going to be bringing in the MI24K. I'm going to bring in a card of the Rajvatka with the UAZ KPV. These, base, these UAZ KPVs are basically the same as a BRDM in terms of their effectiveness. Uh, and then the BRM, probably not worth bringing. I think it just leaves it to the Spets Razvedka that we'll bring in. I think I'm just going to bring them in with trucks. Keep them cheap. As cheap as possible. In this tab, we have quite a lot to bring. We're going to bring the Iglers and the SU-23s. We're definitely going to bring both the Shredder 10 and 3s bring in the tours and I'm probably going to leave it at that although two cards of tours might be something I would consider we're definitely going to bring in the MI24 V AA I'm going to bring in the MI24 V rocket here because of the 122s these are generally faster at killing stuff but obviously going to run out of ammo quicker decent to have if you have a fob otherwise you're better off relying on the MI24 V air tab the 8M, for sure. The MiG-29s, for sure. Otherwise, I'm not too keen on the rest of these aircraft. I mean, the MiG-27 with the napalm could be fun. This kind of already acts as our A, A, or AT, sorry. So I think we're kind of done in this tab. We need to add leaders, which is what I'm kind of looking at here. I have no idea how we're gonna add leaders. If I'm completely honest. <laughs> because these you only get two of on a card. These you only get two of on a card. You only get two of all of these on a card. It's going to be difficult to add them. And I'm already short on points. The difficulty with leaving it till last. What I might do is take out this MI24. And then we can add in two sets of leaders. So we'll bring in some infantry leaders. Uh, although these infantry leaders are very low on number. So I'm going to bring in the BMP 2K and a card of BCR 80 Ks as well. Actually, no, we're probably better off bringing in the tanks if we're going to do that. Yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, we'll, we'll go for BCR 80 Ks in the logistics tab. It's going to be it. All right. 27th Guards Motor Rifle Division. Beautiful. All done. So let me just bring that up for you guys. There it is. Not sure if this is really gonna how I like really gonna be how I leave it. Uh, this will likely come under a lot of iteration, a lot more than probably the 24th will. But. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to play around with in this division. I actually really like it. Like some of these like new equipment, like the Strela 10Ms and the Tours, uh, the new Akatsaya with the uh, guided missile or guided uh, shells. It's really cool. So, yeah, interesting stuff. But that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.